Hey, my loves. Welcome back. We are back with another one. Thank you for joining Joe and I for another review of Married at First Sight, Season 12, Episode 14. Yeah. All right in here. That's right. I actually, um, honestly, this was kind of, I think, one of my favorite one of my favorite episodes and i don't know if but like why but i kind of felt like we we start asking real questions in this episode oh yeah i, I like that about that too yeah. I like about this episode too yeah yeah we were having real questions talking speaking real things having real conversations and everything like that and i really really did appreciate that and everything so this oh my my straw oh there we go this episode <laughs> opens up with Eric and Virginia, okay? Speaking about family and what family means to them and their interactions with one another. And I kind of felt that like, do you feel like we're watching Virginia have a mental meltdown on camera? No, I actually don't. Why, why, why'd you say that? I feel like Virginia is crying every other scene. Yeah, she is. But she said in the in a couple of weeks ago, she did make a statement about how she um, is dealing with a lot, has had a lot of past trauma and hasn't really. Um, we talked about how she didn't really deal with that in um, therapy and in like individual personal therapy. Um, like, you know, like we feel like we were talking about how we didn't like how they just threw people in the in the deep end and had, didn't really, the experts weren't coming around and also weren't dealing with them on their own individual personal journeys. And she has a lot of issues. And her dad even said that when he talked to him, he said, yeah. you know, I we put our kids through a lot, you know? Um, so I think what we're seeing with Virginia is all of that stuff coming up to boil in, in, a, in a marriage, which as it does, right? You, you, you get into a real relationship, you get into a marriage and you, have to deal with demons that you didn't have to deal with when you were single and just living fly and fancy free. That's real. That's real. But I feel like she's always at the verge of a breakdown. Like she crying. Is. Like she the is. way that she cried that he hadn't called her parents and they are like, what, what did they say? It's 13 days before decision day. So yeah. you're not even two months into your marriage and you're mad because your husband doesn't initiate conversation. That to me was just like over, it felt. I, I think she, I think that was, so mo a lot of times when people have emotions like this, where you feel like this is a lot, it's because it is stemming from some deeper stuff. And I think this stemmed from her feeling overwhelmed and feeling like I am constantly trying to fit into your box, which he is constantly showing her it's my way or the highway. He did it again this episode. Um, he's constantly trying to fit her into his, like she even said, his idea of marriage, his his idea of their relationship. It, you know, if you don't like it, you can bounce. And she, I feel like part of her, what it feels overwhelmed because she's like I'm trying and failing because part of, part of the reason she don't really have the tools to, to do this like we talked about yeah she's she's super green um and she's I think she just felt overwhelmed and she felt like I'm trying super hard and family means a lot to her and you she doesn't feel like you're trying to do anything which we've seen in other in other areas where Eric is kind of been one sided like you do this for me you do this you do that in the third and and if you don't like it, then it's, then you could bounce. But I think that, um, and, you know, as we're moving down and talking about Eric and Virginia, mm -hmm. they have, uh, Virginia has this moment with Eric's sister-in-law. He calls her his sister. And they just speak about how, um, and she, she's, she's married to his brother. And she, she, she gave me some insight. I don't know if any of you guys picked this up, but when she said that, like, they don't really talk about their feelings and they don't really get into stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That to me was the reason why Eric is constantly like, it's my way or the highway. Mm -hmm. but he, he is not, he can't sort his feelings enough mm -hmm. to say, this is how I feel about the situation. So you can understand it mm -hmm. because in his mind, it genuinely may be a deal breaker. Like, don't get me messed up. Mm -hmm. But I think that like, in the moment when he has a responsibility to talk to another adult about how he actually feels, he doesn't show up. And I, and that is what bothers me. But I also feel like I feel, I'm beginning to feel like Virginia doesn't like him. 
And I don't know, you guys let me know. I could be wrong. But yeah. I feel like every time they have a good moment, she say something that just knocks the whole shit off his kilter. And it's just like um, I don't it's fu it's funny because I don't feel that way about Virginia, but I'm starting to feel that way about Jacob. But the but to your point about um uh, uh I I think about him, what's his name? Um uh, Eric. Eric not really being able to express himself in the way that he should in the time that he should. This is what my point is and my kind of beef with the process. Yeah. Because that's what I was because I, I feel the same way about Virginia. Um in in the sense of like y'all somebody should be walk working with him as in, in his individual journey yeah. to help him to be able to do that because it comes across as very brash and very one-sided. And I think that when you see her burst into tears every five minutes, I think that it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's part of it. It's a result of it. But I thought that, you know, they have this moment where they want to get to know each other and have, like, get deeper into whom each other is. And they have, mm -hmm. uh, they meet at the gym. Is that the same gym that Eric, I mean, that, what's the other, I don't even want to bring them up. Never mind. The point is, <laughs> I ain't gonna bring them up. The point is, is that they sit down and they have this moment, which I thought was super cute. It was good to see her be athletic and everything. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. And at the end of this moment, they show each other, or Virginia shows like all of her, you know, memorabilia from being like a high school basketball star and everything. Mm -hmm. And they speak about, he just says like, I want you to be okay with me taking care of you and you know, everybody needs somebody, you know what I mean? And I want to be that person that you feel like you need, you know what I mean? And she says, I can't just, I got to need you. I can't, why can't I just want you? And I've been really, that's been stirring in my spirit, child, because <laughs> it really has, because you wouldn't believe how many women say that to me. Like, why do I need like, I don't need him, but I want him. And I always ask, what is so wrong with just saying you need your man? It's a mental thing. Like, what? I really, I genuinely, I genuinely, and this is a question. Bust down in the comments if you have that kind of idea. But what exactly is the issue with saying that I am with something mm -hmm. for whom if he was to be absent, I would lack so greatly? Mm -hmm. At, what is the, that's been starting. Why did that buy? That's not a what. That's a need. I would lack mm -hmm. to lack so greatly. It means that I needed you. Some part of you I needed in order to move forward. Now, does life go on? Hell yeah. But why do we pretend like we don't need people? Or like we so independent that I your presence is just what I it's just what it is. Presence. I think it's a defense mechanism for people. I do too. I just felt like that was a lot to say. I felt like it was really kind of like, I'm kind of over it, the narrative yeah. and everything like that. I feel like, you know, sis, we get it. You independent, when, when, when. We know that they set you up to be independent. But in doing that, they, I feel like they're the lack of being a spouse, a lack of partnership. Yeah. A lack of, you know what I mean? Because partners depend on partners. Yeah, yeah. Because if you are if you're a team, the, the bottom line is this in any in any, any walk of life, if you are a team, if you are a basketball team, if you're a football team, like you need, you can't if you if you play five on five basketball, you need all five people. You need them. Otherwise you can't play the game, right? And the same thing when you become a team and in your relationship, you need that other person to be there. You know what I'm saying? Otherwise, this ship is not going to function the same way. I think coming from a single mindset, um, the, the, the word, the same, it hits people's ears wrong because they've been conditioned to, to, to be okay in their situation, whatever their situation is. So now I've worked so hard to be quote unquote independent where I don't need nobody. If this is a party of one, it's me versus everybody. And people, I think, I think people feel like the minute that you say, I say, I, I need somebody or I need them. Now it diminishes some of the work that I did to become yes. this independent free. And it's just not and true, but I think that is, I think that that's how people think. And I think that we aren't unlocking 
um, I need mine like I need air. Straight up. You know what I mean? And, and I, I don't apologize for it. And I don't give a damn what no, I mean like air. Like there's oxygen and gel and then everything else. Then I can drink <laughs> some water. Then I can drink some water after that. But it's like in real life, you know what I mean? I feel so deeply like I, I, uh, how can people really want to be in love and not understand how that nourishes their spirit, their soul, their mental, their emotional to a space where you would be operating in a deficit without that love. I, well, you know what? I also think that it, it comes from experiencing it because I, I would I would think you, you can't miss something that you never had. Here. Right. And so I think if you've never experienced that yeah. type of love, then the the idea of you need. We talked about a, a while ago, uh, uh, me and you, a friend of yours who said something like, um, you don't get tired of being around Joe all the time or something like that, like while we were in the pandemic. And my response to to I wasn't there, but but in talking to you, my response to Czar was if you haven't met that person who you want to be around all the time, you can't fathom wanting to be around somebody all the time because you haven't experienced it. So you just, you all your experience is Joe Smell and Ronnie and Kenny from Seafood and you would never want to be around them 24 seven. You know what I'm saying? So I, I understand it not being able to see past your own experiences. So I do get that, but I, I enjoyed the sit down that she had with the sister-in-law because yeah. the sister-in-law was shady as hell. Was you nah, picking that not, up? I don't think she was shady. I think oh, she, she was I shady. Think, she was you know what? Her like, you know what I think she was? was? You know what I think she was? Mary. Mary. I just think she was Mary. Mary. And she was just like, uh, okay, but sis, that, that ain't gonna work. When she said, so she says, like, well, I Eric kind of like was able to make me number one, and like as if he don't got nothing going on in his life. So it's easy for me to be number one. And I'm I'm not really there yet where he's my number one. And she just was like, wait, what? Like, yeah, she was what thinking what we've been thinking for, for 14 episodes. Your husband is not your number one priority when it comes to you and your friends? No, because that's her boyfriend in her mind. I just feel like... Like Virginia, they're just dating. I be wanting to go hard for Virginia because sometimes Eric really be doing like jack I, Yeah, yeah. But but I'm also beginning to think that the reason why Eric talks to her is because he tired of teaching bitches. And he didn't think he was going to have to be doing this. So he be having a tone of matter of factness that may offend a woman like me because he dealing with a young girl. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's definitely a little bit of both. It's definitely a little bit of like he's constantly teaching somebody who is should, should not be on this show. Because right. she's because she ain't ready for a real relationship and she ain't ready for marriage. You know, and then you don't think your husband should be your priority. Yeah, I'm not that didn't surprise me about her. Number one over everybody? No. We she never she I don't even know. I don't even know that Virginia has ever been in a serious relationship, period. In life. I don't even think Virginia know herself. I would be surprised if the bitch know how to spell her name. That's really how I feel. <laughs> like when's your birthday, Virginia? Do you even know? Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, because I don't even, I, I, I'm I, just like, girl, please. Because I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. Like, based on her story, her upbringing, you know what I mean? Everything like that. Just having to operate from a deficit as far as, like, familiar love has gone. I, I want to give you the benefit of the doubt. But it's like, you are, you needed way more therapy than you, than they provide. Like Yes, yes. You, like, personal, like, personal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, we can move on. They were talking to Dr. Pepper and I thought it was really poignant. I think the biggest thing that they spoke about was um, what your marriage looks like. And me and you talk about this all the time mm -hmm. and how like I do believe that every marriage is different and what you your standards for your marriage are different. Yeah. But I do kind of agree with Eric when he says some shit though. Is like the foundation. Like, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, at the very least, if you get married to anyone, you know that you have a commitment to that. Per that's something yeah. that's universal. The basic right? line. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, and I, I don't, I do think that he is trying to make, he's trying to get this cookie cutter relationship kind of thing. Yeah. But I, all, I do believe that. But I also think that her saying that our marriage doesn't have to be like everybody else's means to what I hear is that in our marriage, I can go out and do whatever I want to do and it should be fine. That's yeah. what, but that's it's okay because it's yeah. our marriage. Yeah, that's what I hear. yeah, because it, it, it's kind of it's kind of in the air of like, 
Yeah, I know all these other wives ain't out here sleeping on uh, their homeboys' couches, but we should be able to do that because we're different. <laughs> and it's like, that ain't it. That ain't it. But what blew my mind, because I be wanting to go somewhere with her, and then she say some stupid ass shit, and I'll be like, I can't even believe it. Even in yeah. my mind, I'm like, I can't even believe I was about to go. I feel the same way. Yep. So she says, well, he works. Obviously, he works. And she even alluded to this with the young lady that she feels like he constantly wants to be up under her. And even I, I sat back and thought, how could a pilot possibly constantly want to be? Of course, he constantly wants to be up under you because he can't be around you every right. day. Yeah. So when he comes home, it's important that he is around his wife. This is My immaturity. travels for work. So when this is John immaturity. Comes home, he has an expectation of how much time we devote to each other because he travels for work. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, it just was really like. Yeah. I, I think it's just immaturity with her. That's why I I, I, I am. They make me want to fight. I'm, I stand by the, <laughs> the, the stance that she really did not belong on this, this, this season. I just really, I just really am like. I wanted the problem is is that Eric do be doing stuff that's like that's yeah, too much. But right. I honestly felt like all episode he was kind of cool. Like he was kind of like all right, like trying to give you some space, trying to understand where you coming from. But even for her to say, and I'm gonna leave it at this. Even for her to say, oh, what if? Why do I gotta be home if you're not home? Like why do I gotta stay at home? Like spend the night at home if you're not home. Yeah, like I should be able to run the streets at all times of the night because you ain't here. But this is, I listen, I just, this is immaturity. I don't want to devote too much time to her because okay. we we That's we understand true. what this is, is what, as far as her, you know what I mean? Like, this is the mindset of, you know, uh, of somebody who fresh out of college or fresh out of high school, damn near for real, for real. We've been like, you know what I mean? So I'm not really surprised that she, these, I, this is the person that in week one, the idea of, of checking in a, 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 while you're traveling long distance was crazy to her. So mm -hmm. this is not, Surprising me. Yeah, what's controlling? Okay, you're right, babe. I'm sorry. Let's move on to Brianna and Vincent. Um, yeah. I actually really enjoyed Brianna and Vincent this episode. Yeah. I thought they were super, super cute. It was really good to see them get to know one another on a deeper level. Brianna used to do take dance, and she kind of opened up about her struggles with confidence, being a dark a brown girl, which I get. Mm -hmm being a dark skinned girl, and that really it resonated with me. I'm like, damn girl, like we all got the same story. Yeah, like you know, what I, 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 that's what I liked about this episode. I think there was a lot of things that in this episode got down to really relatable things, really mm -hmm. relatable topics. That talk, you know, the you know the 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 colorism thing. I heard her, her saying that she dealt with it, you know, with with light skin being in, and which yeah. we all have, you know, all of brown people have, girls and guys alike have have dealt with that. Um, they got into the issue of the family and stuff. They got into adoption, which is something that me and Zara has talked about. Yeah. So I thought the, they touched a lot of things that was really related, but I thought that was cool in this episode. I thought it was cool, but how did you feel about how they resolved? Um... I, I I don't feel like anything was resolved. That's my only gripe. Like, I just was like, I don't know if they're just editing this weird or because even the, during the sit down, with Dr. Pepper, it just felt choppy to me. Like it felt like we we touched on the issue of of Brianna not listening and not compromising again. Yeah. And then Dr. Pepper was just like, "Yeah, so you feel like you got your answers?" And then Vince was like, "Yeah, cool." And then we just moved on. I'm like, "What what happened?" Because it went from Vince saying, "Me just waking up earlier for you is not a compromise," and Dr. Pepper never like finessed it any or well, like said, I don't I felt like where was the resolve in this Dr. Pepper said that where what if you did you woke up a certain amount of days at a certain time so like maybe on Saturday you'll wake up early this Saturday we could do some things but Sunday I'll let you sleep in like could that be a compromise and Brianna said yes and Vincent said yes and he felt like there was some resolution there but okay I, I, I think I missed that part then okay okay, okay. But I do yeah think that um I, I question that as well because yeah. vincent has a go along to get along spirit yeah but then we'll turn around to be one of those people that be like well i'm underserved and you ain't do to snap thing. vincent will snap vincent gives vincent gives he's gives me yeah. like he will snap at some point and so that's why i worry about him constantly biting his tongue because i feel like 
Vincent is going to lose his mind on this girl at one point. So you need to start listening when he's speaking in a tone that sounds like this. But I do wonder, he does say that, like, he, he didn't say he was open to the idea of adoption. He like, you gonna have that baby if it kill you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, it, if it kill you. And, <sighs> and listen. He like, yeah. Kill you, okay? Straight up. He like, I I like not really feeling, I feel like he's not being supportive, right? But I also think it's premature to have this conversation. It is. So, they haven't been married that long. I'm kind of feeling like y'all doing a little bit too much. Because because it's a shock. It's a shock on the system for both parties, right? Yeah. She's she's been, you know, kind of. She seems like she's been warming up to the idea of like not having kids at all by the time she got into this situation. And he seems like he's met with the reality that if he stays with this woman, he might not ever have kids. So there, so I under, this is what I mean by throwing these people into the deep end, especially in this type of situation where it was like, this should have been on the questionnaire for the show or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, cause he was, cause I, I can understand just be thinking like you spend your whole life, especially being a, growing up in a family oriented environment and stuff like that. And he Latino, so you know, they like to have 2000 kids. And so he, so he's coming into this thing. Like I went from, I, I have to, I had to wrap my brain around the idea of shrinking my, my family goals from 2000 kids to maybe none. Yeah. So I can understand or it. it. Yeah. Or an adopted a problem. You and I, have yeah, I, I ain't, I'm not down with adoption either, so I can I can understand well, it. Slow down, so I don't like you know I don't like this conversation. Okay, okay. I, no, no, no. Here's the thing: I personally am not down with adoption. I don't want to adopt, but for but my, but for, but for my, before my wife, if that is something that we that we have to do, then that's something that I'll be open to. But 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 the the actual desire to, I have no desire to, and that's another thing that he that he like is thinking about because because then they threw that on him and he like yo i need time to think about this like i went from like oh i might not ever have any kids to now we talking about a, a motherfucker i never even met okay yeah yeah but i i think it was a fascinating because i do think that brianna has a judgy tone and yeah way she does i'm off sometimes I, I i can see how he may take it as like what is that supposed to mean Mm -hmm. And I think she's trying to work on that because I think she recognizes it as well. Like, mm -hmm. like Dr. Pepper after that, like, why is it so important to you that you do these things? Like, do you, he literally said, he said, he thinks you think he's like, I'm not lazy. So that means that's what he thinks you think. Right. And, and she was like, no, I don't think that. But I do think there's something. Brianna got to break out of this. She got a little bit of Eric spirit in her and she got to break out of that. This, this is my way. Cause they done had this conversation multiple times and okay. every time every time her idea of a compromise is well you should just wake up a little earlier or you should just go to sleep a little earlier and it was like what and you also you know what i was thinking about this and this is to take it full circle back to them uh talking about dates and what's responsible and everything like that vincent is not even like a first generation um american right so like right. his child will be first generation and he came from, if you guys have ever been in Dominican Republic, it really is only to, you're either wealthy or you're poor, period. Right? You know what I mean? Like, middle class is almost like not a thing. And he, I think that when he speaks about going out and spending money and doing all these things, he is operating from a space of, I've lived a life. Yeah, yeah. Required us to penny pinch and do this and do that, and I yes. want all the great things, but I also don't want to lose my money. I don't want to yeah. ever not have money ever again. And I really, absolutely understood. It it brought me full circle when they went to the Domin Dominican um restaurant, which I thought was so dope. They went to Dominican restaurant, and I, that really brought me full circle. Like, okay, it makes sense to me why he doesn't. Now, why he I wants to be responsible with his money. Yeah, now, I don't got. I, I think responsibility is arbitrary i think it's why he feels like he needs to be more frugal in certain areas because i i feel like i'm very responsible with my money but i'm gonna buy myself a gucci bag or a louis vuitton bag or whatever i want like you know what i mean yeah like, no you know, everything is fine <laughs> no 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 there is responsible and there's irresponsible now and you no 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 i'm not saying like i'm saying like 
if you he, the reason the reason why he he had a conversation with Brianna about being more responsible with his spending, which is what they talked about, is because he said, "I've experienced lack. I've experienced going without, and I think about that, and I never take these things for granted." That's why he said that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's not to say that Brianna was being irresponsible. I never said Brianna was an irresponsible spender. I never called you a res an irresponsible spender. What I said was that I I can I can tap in and 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 can understand him thinking I want us to roll things back to fit uh, to 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 keep in mind to be a little bit more mindful of what our financial goals are moving forward. That's all. And he and he explained his background and why he thinks like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's go on and speak about Ryan and Clara, whom I could care. I have not cared less about a couple who married at first sight than Ryan and Clara. And I'm going to be honest. I think it's because I genuinely don't like them. Like, I don't like them individually. I've been really <laughs> thinking about this. I don't like them as people, like individuals, and I don't like them together. And it feels so contrived. It's like this, like robot, like, eh, eh, eh. <sighs> It feel like they trying to, it, 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 it's almost giving Eric and Virginia, except for Clara's not an alcoholic, but it's giving like a <laughs> lot of like, I'm going to, I don't even know what's real. That's how I feel. And that makes it uncomfortable for me as well. So full disclosure, we're going to run through them because I ain't really feeling them like that. But Ryan <laughs> speaks with Clara's mother about, um, you know, raising children, his upbringing and everything, just getting a better grasp on Clara and how she was raised and he brings up the idea of raising kids in the church and how important that is to him and why that's another reason why him and Clara ain't fucking even though she didn't bring it up I no, just that's that... a me that's a me note that's a me <laughs> note but she like literally put on he he speaks with her about these things and the mother discloses that like I didn't even start going to church until I had children. You know what I mean? Like, because mm -hmm. I knew then I felt like it was it something. It changed that, her outlook on, on, it changed on how her she outlook. wanted to raise a family. And yeah. it may change Clara's. And that's kind of how I felt like this is also a conversation too soon to have. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, I think that, because Clara made a very valid point. Her parents have been married for a very long time. She said her father has never gone to church. <laughs> so mm -hmm. she said, so I know a marriage can work. Even though I I would argue that her parents' marriage ain't working, but I'm just reading body <laughs> language. I'm just reading body language. But but I, I think that, you know, what she's getting at is that people can coexist and still believe the same things, but not maybe not take the same steps in their mm -hmm. belief. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Yeah. Uh -huh. And I think that I thought it was really um I, did you feel like the mom was flirting with Ryan? No, I feel like the mom likes Ryan. And I feel like uh, Ryan might like the mom more than he likes Clara. That's what, um, so, I <laughs> you know, I felt it, something. Yeah, I, I think, I think, I think honestly, he can relate a little bit more to. I never seen Ryan so conversational, I feel like, you know, it, especially when in his exchanges with Clara, you know. He didn't speak to heathens. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I think I think they just you know was able you know we know that they edit clips out you know what I'm yeah. saying and I think that they probably had a much longer conversation I think they probably found common ground in many different areas they just showed us one of them yeah. and yeah. so I think that's why they 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 vibed you know he for sure likes her mom more than he likes her yeah but yeah. they all go sit down with um her parents and. They speak about like all the things that Clara couldn't do, which to me wasn't like far fetched. Like she was like talking about the Usher CD, which kind of aged me because I feel like I was what I must have been old. Well, never mind. But I'm like, I don't remember <laughs> my mama ripping. That. My mom sent me to that concert. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but 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 <laughs> but I think that her mom ripping up the Usher CD might have came from a different place. You know what I mean? Yeah, it felt uh, that way. Didn't it, it felt like it came from a little bit of a. <laughs> Uh, of a MAGA place, okay? Like That's we don't we don't listen to the, we don't listen to those people in here. It kind of it, it felt it, it felt like that a little bit. But then again, but then again, maybe not because Usher was talking about some grown people stuff, and maybe that wasn't for it her young ears. So I don't know. Uh, mm, but yeah, I definitely my mama definitely sent me to that. I don't know what they say about Angel, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, babe, my phone is dying. But I um really. 
enjoyed their sit down with one another because it does give you a lot more, I guess, perspective on who she is mm -hmm. as well as like where she came from. Right. But it's also making me feel like, Clara, when did you get like, you got hope in your spirit. What's that yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. Because you, you, you said in in your your introductory, I guess, interview that she was looking forward to somebody not just wanting to jump your bones. And it was like, damn, that's how, that's how your life been going. Like, I, like, like you ain't that. even that cute. And I'm so disrespectful to, but I really was looking at her like, girl, you are okay. Like, they want to jump your bones like that. They say more about what's on your spirit than they do about you. How about that? I mean, them, they say more about you. Like, you know what I mean? But I did like when they sat down with Dr. Pepper, that Dr. Pepper was coming for Ryan. Like, we need to really get these questions answered. Have you even asked her how it makes you her feel? Yeah. That you don't want to, like, say I love you and you don't want to do this? And this is when I decided I don't like Ryan. Why? What did he say that you, what, what, why? What did I wrote it, I wrote it down because I wanted to be real clear. Yeah, because I don't. He didn't. He doesn't want to get into saying "I love you," and it loses its meaning. Now, what's not? Now, what's not likable about that? Because I, I can, I agree with that statement. Like, I, I don't think you should just be "I love everybody." But, but that's the issue I have with the statement is that she's your wife. <laughs> The issue I yeah, have but he's still on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all. Let's not act like right. we gotta we gotta take a, a pause. No, and not act like no, the reality. I'm done, I'm done giving listen, pass. listen. Done. This is not about a pass. Listen, this okay. is not about a pass. Mm -hmm. We gotta have a little bit of a re reality check here, and we gotta take a pause, and we can't act like these people have not known each other for six weeks. You're so listen, let me hold on. Let me let me finish. Let me finish my statement. We can't act like these people have not known each other for six weeks. I, I've, I personally have never been in love with anybody who I've known for six weeks. So if they, if I don't feel comfortable, if somebody we can't chastise somebody for not wanting to say I love you when they don't even know this person. That's he just not what he said. Listen to my words. He said he doesn't want to set, get into saying I love you. And it loses its meaning. Dr. Pepper responds yeah. with, "I when I get off the phone with my husband and my kids, I say I love you." Every yeah, but he's he's time. but in Why his context, we're not talking about weeks. We're not talking about meeting somebody and for that's not what we're speaking about. We yeah. are speaking about merely, just merely saying I love you. Yes, and I think, I think I think that this I your think response is that I don't want to say I love you because I don't want it to lose its meaning. And I think- But what does that mean? I think the dis, I'm going to tell you what it means. I think the disconnect no. is he, he was coming from a place of saying right now in our situation, in his situation, putting it in context of him and Claire, his situation is when she's saying it in a, in a romantic way and I don't feel that way. So if I say it in this current state, then for me, it's just me saying the word, just saying it in the context no, of romantic no, love. And I'm just saying it just to say, it. I wouldn't be telling somebody I love them. It's knowing that, knowing that they're telling me that they're in love with me. Because Clara also said in this episode, I love, him. I'm in love with him. Right. So now, so now, I don't, so now, that either, that, I don't <laughs> need, but I, this is my, but babe, no. this is, this is my point. I don't believe it either. And I think, I and I think that, and I think that he's thinking about that, thinking like, I, if you, you are saying that you're in love with me, but I'm not in love with you. So for me to say that will feel like I'm, I'm doing the word a disservice. But I can't. I but I don't accept that as an answer. I recognize that that's how you're. Uh, uh, that's how he answered it. That was not the question. Yeah. He gave a specific answer, and somebody replied to him specifically. Like that doesn't make any. So you just don't want to say it to anybody, or and, and do you no, feel it not. and not want to say it, or what does it look like when you? That it's just it's just to me, to me I'm a little bit like at the space with him. It's like I'm so tired of this narrative that like oh I want to wait till we trust each other or this and that. That's some bull swanky. So what do you think he? What do you think his angle is? You think he just on here like on some Chris type shit? No. No, no, let's be clear. I, I don't think that. So, what do you think it? What do you think it is? You don't. You don't accept his answer. What do you think it is? I don't think he like her. I think he's searching for the moment where it clicks to him that he's into this young woman. 
because I don't think he genuinely feels into her. Because I think that, I do think that you can be, we never see them be affectionate in any way. I mean, in any way. You got to think, think about watching them. You see Brianna and Vincent, every time you see them, if he left the room and came back in the room, you see them kissing their mouth every single time. If y'all are the next best couple, right, on this whole journey, why don't, why are y'all not, and not PDA, but I mean basic affection. Like, you know what I mean? I feel like, I, I feel like she's into him and I feel like he's trying to figure out if he even like being here. That's how I feel. And I feel like, and it's frustrating to me because I'm watching it and I'm like, y'all don't feel like this man ain't that into her. And yet we talk about like they so on the up and up. It's whack and it feels contrived to me. It really feels contrived. I don't. All, go ahead. I, I don't. I don't. I I never thought that he was super into her, but I also never felt like he he was just like an affectionate person. I also never felt like he was a comfortable person. Like he always seemed like he don't know what to do with his hands to me. And I think that we talked about people being in front of the cameras and stuff like that and they kind of changing oh. their patterns and stuff like that. Yeah. And I I don't I I, I kind of think that that's affecting him as well too. I think that's affecting him, but I think that also she ain't that affectionate. And that could be pro uh, Yeah, and she, cuz she cuz cuz because we know she that having 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 sex and having intimacy is two different things. And to me, she strikes me as she's into having sex and not necessarily into the intimacy. Oh, 17,000 percent. 17,000 percent. I also think I was asking myself because she keeps bringing up this I love you thing. Like I need him to say I love you. I want him to say I love you. I want him to have real deep feelings about me. And I think that I'm, I'm really trying to understand why this is so. Because and that's part of that's part of her. That's part of her her uh, um, her promiscuous past, I think, because she's just loving everybody. And I think that's how she got to the that's I think that's how she got to the point where she she's only been in relationships where all the dudes wanted to hit because all they had to say was, I love you. Hmm. And she and 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 now we on. Okay. Okay. But I just feel like, you know, something I feel like there's a larger disconnect than what's going on. And I think that that's why I'm so frustrated with them and I really don't care for them. Like I feel yeah. like I, I'm so tired of people being like, oh it's great. It's this, it's that. And it's like I can visibly see that you guys are disconnected, completely yeah. disconnected. He don't even ask you about and they will how both you lie. feel about him not. He don't even ask you. That's how you know he don't even think about you. Yeah. And we can talk about, and I mean that respect, like he don't even think about you because he move and make decisions based on himself. I don't think he's a bad guy. I want to be clear about that. But I just, or I would, I would argue that it's even as good as it says. And if they, if I'm wrong and I got to eat crow, then so be it. But right now. Well, they, 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 they in the habit of just lying about their situation. They did lying. the last one. <laughs> lying. And it's stressing me the f out. So let's talk. Lastly, babe, let's get into this. Uh, the people who replaced the shit show that was Paige and Chris. Well, I, I, I thought it was, I thought it was, uh, actually refreshing to not have to do another Paige and Chris, uh, uh, oh, confessional too. and saga and like we dragging them both back through there that, and i got to the end of the episode and was like oh i didn't, that, know that that didn't, that didn't, I didn't even notice it i literally didn't notice it i know i didn't even miss them and i thought about that too like they could have been doing this shit all along yeah because we didn't need whatever what the little confessionals and drama that they had last week we didn't need that at all that could have just stayed nothing no uh, let's talk about Haley and jacob because they about to start carrying the drama this season they sure um, are Haley, so so Haley and Jacob do two competitive things. One is the baseball thing, where Haley is like coming at him for coming to the uh uh baseball thing with his Sunday shoes on or whatever the case. <laughs> 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 Not the Sunday shoes. He had on his church shoes, baby. He sure did with his straight leg uh, iron jeans, straight Which, up. I'm like, I, so I, I have such an issue with Haley, and and the problem is, is that now I have an issue with Jacob, and it's frustrating me. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I at this point, I what at this point, saying? at this point, the, this this episode in particular, my issue was was squarely, almost squarely with 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 Jacob. The the you talked about earlier on, you talked about um, I think it was Virginia, how you felt like whenever they got to a moment, she would say, Jacob, it's like. He he it's like he wants 
to, like he oh he got a bone to pick at, at every turn, like every moment. It could be it could be the littlest exercise. It could be the a, a small thing, a cute little conversation here. Then he got to bring something up. It's like if she says, "What's your favorite food?" Uh, I I don't know. Maybe it's the food that you said you didn't like when I made it to you two weeks ago, Saturday night at eight o'clock. It's like, bro, like yo, she's trying to have a moment with you, bro. But you know like, what though? Just chill. Just answer the question. Like he, it's like it's like so weird. It's like ridiculous. It was ex Jacob is exhausting. He's exhausting, and I, and I and I get it. I get tired of watching them because I see Haley like at least trying to like have a conversation or do something light or just have you know do whatever the activity is. We hitting baseball today. Let's talk about the baseball. Are we talking about our past and or, or reading the letters to ourselves? And you don't you don't have nothing to say to yourself. You ain't. But, not, but my my letter would be that short too. I wouldn't no, have that question. No. My no. letter be short. No, because not because not only Cassie did he not everything around me. No, no, because not not not, not only not only did he not have anything to say to himself, but he didn't even have anything to say about what she said. She like she read her thing and she was like, "Are you gonna say something?" But can I let me give you some context though, babe? She does not stay at the apartment. Yeah, but we heard they that. We heard that already. But there, but y'all, but she's there now. We can't keep talking about that every week because then when she is there, you are. No, why do you want her there if you're not going to talk to her? It, but when is he supposed to talk? If they don't have contact, unless they are. Finished, no, we're not doing this. Wait, if you are there, if you, if you, but if you are there and we're having a conversation, if what you want is a conversation, if what you want is for her to be around, when then when she's around, participate. We can't give him a pass. For not participating when she is there, you know what I'm but saying? Like her past for not participating. No, nobody get. No, 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 no. That's no, no. what We're, you're doing. You're no. involving her of the fact that she does not. She is not present when the cameras are not rolling. And no, no, now no. he's got to be present when the cameras are rolling. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You're wait a minute. Her. If no, 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 I'm not absolving anybody. If no, listen. If 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 no one's going to participate when they're together, then why are they on the show? What are you talking well, I'm about? I'm with you, baby. You ain't got okay, so so I'm not I'm not I'm not so so I'm not absolving anybody. I'm saying I'm saying I'm saying that if you're going to be there on the show together, then participate. I'm not I'm, that doesn't absolve Haley of anything. That's saying but that he it, is participating. It, he no, he's y'all y'all. The girl, the guy just sat there. He did this last week, y'all. I don't understand it. He Why did. we we can't? He did this last week. My thing is this. If you're going to if if you're going to show up, if you don't want to talk to her, don't show up. That's I, what I'm saying. Because because I don't care. I don't care how many hours she she there. I don't care. I don't care about none of that. When 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 she is there and and y'all are told to do these activities and you show up for the activity, then participate in the activity. If the activity, if the experts is telling you when y'all, this is how y'all build uh, intimacy. This is yeah. how y'all learn about each other. And then they give you a card game and they tell you to ask each other questions. Respond to the questions. Otherwise, don't be there. Don't we tell me. Don't tell me that you're still mad because, because she doesn't spend enough time. Like she's there now. Are you going to talk to her or not? Because if if that's if you're going to stake your claim on, well, she's not around when the camera's not here. Then don't show up. You either you're not saying anything, or you're not giving anything to the conversation, or you you got a snarky ass remark every five minutes. No, that's I, draining I, I the watch. Disagree. I don't disagree. I think that I think that you're absolutely right in saying that. I feel like this episode he kind of drew shit out, and it kind of was like, really, bro? Like y'all was having a nice moment. It's but every I, time, it's every week he's doing this. Yeah, like I I understand what you're saying. I'm just saying that I also get. I can say I agree with that, but I can also say I understand why he throws shade if he doesn't have any interaction with her unless they're in front of the film and can't stand. Yeah, but I'm but I'm saying you gotta then 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 do something about it then. But that's what I'm saying. Like the shit or get off the pot is what I'm saying. You can't you can't tell me that you that you wanna go out, you wanna go out, you wanna go out. Yeah, or and then when we and then, and then we go out and you 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 tight lit the whole night. Like well, you know what I'm saying? How do you feel about the bracelet situation? I, I set it up. The bracelet. Keep your thought. But the bracelet was uh expensive, eight hundred dollars, eight hundred dollar bracelet on their wedding day, and he felt the way because she hadn't worn the bracelet. He hasn't even seen the bracelet. He don't know if she still owned the bracelet. The bracelet was somewhere in Nashville, wherever her mama lived, with her mama, and he felt a way about that because he thought he provided her with a token. Uh, an affection of affection and she cares moot about it and his thing is like run me my bracelet back bro but go ahead babe. 
Um, I, I thought the bra- I think it's two sides to the bracelet thing. Like I can understand him feeling like, yo, I, I spent money on this gift for you. I gave you the gift and the gift is an afterthought. It's not even here. I understand his frustration with that. And that would piss me off too. But I also understand her side of like, we don't even like each other. And we've been, we've been trying to literally find a common ground of just like being in the same room together and having a conversation. The bracelet is, was the last thing on my mind. And then them having a conversation about the bracelet and then the bracelet coming up every week. But do you think, don't you think, I mean, I, I'm, I don't want to say that people should read people's minds or whatever like that. But I think part of being somebody's spouse is being forward thinking, right? And being able to not predict their responses to things, but have an understanding of how that may affect them, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I think that's where Dr. Pepper was coming from. If y'all had a conversation about it, you knew how he felt about it. And you still made no effort to say, you know what? Next time you see me, I'm going to wear it. Because it could be just something as small as that because he did that from a space of investment. I'm invested in you. I'm invested in this. I don't even know you, but I'm investing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think that I think that it was wrong of Haley to be like, well, it's just a bracelet, like whatever. And it, it, it it's yeah, like, I agree. It's not, it's 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 more the principle. And I thought it was kind of like whack that she said, Well, I bought you a hat. And it was like you well, didn't put, go ahead. I- I thought I thought it was I, I thought it was whack for it to be a tit for tat thing. Of, that's like right, that's uh, right. of, of, of also it, but even him saying like well the hat was only twenty dollars like it don't matter how much it doesn't matter you know what I mean like it doesn't matter how much something you give me you take your time your effort to get to get it for me I I, I value it you know what I, I mean I thought that was fucked up to say. I agree, and I felt I thought I thought both of them were like fucked up for saying that shit, and I'd be wondering why Doctor Pepper don't be like. Cut that out, like you know. Do- yeah, Doctor, I ain't. I'm listen, and y'all probably already picked up on this. I'm not feeling Doctor Pepper this season, or, or none of them for real, for real. I, I, I just think none of, them. none of them. Everybody acting like they don't know what the f is going on. Yeah, like that. When they do that, yeah, know, yeah, know. yeah. I, I, I'm over it. Stop it. Just stop it. I'm but done to with your it. point. I just thought that like that, but I, I, I also didn't like the conversation that sh- her and her mother had. As if it'd be really weird to me, like you really be having to consider who you speak to about things, I feel like. Because like yes. her mom is just caping for her, right? Like her mom yeah. is just, like holding her daughter down or whatever. But as a girlfriend, as a girlfriend, I would have said, Your ass, the moment he bought it up, you should have been like, Let me get this shit here. Mm-hmm. The next day, he said, It ain't even about you wearing it. I haven't even you it make me feel like you don't even give it a, you threw that away like you throwing us away. That's mm-hmm. he's aligning it with that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's what he said. He said this is just a microcosm of our relationship. Yeah. So that's my thing, right? So now he out, out of sight, out of mind. So is anything he's ever provided for you. And I think that that's messed up. And the problem is that Haley, I wanna like Haley, but just because I think if I met her, me and her will vibe. But I also mm-hmm. think that like I really do not like her in a relationship, not with this person. And I think I think this ain't the relationship for her. I think that this was a right. I think right. this was a, a a a piss poor match. The same way that I think uh, um uh Eric and Virginia was a piss poor match. The same way Chris and Paige was a piss poor match. I think that they the the experts oh. dropped the ball uh, on everybody, but you know Brianna and Vincent, and that's a maybe. I'm just not. I'm curious to see what the next episode is going to be like with everybody going on like their little vacation together, or whatever the case mm-hmm. for their couple's vacation before um, decision day. So we shall see. This was a fascinating episode. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Let us know how you guys felt about it. Bust down, comment. We love talking to you guys. Um, Joe gonna have a bunch of time on the bus, so y'all make sure y'all hit him up specifically. <laughs> You gonna have some time. I don't know. Man. The time is getting shorter now because we doing a bunch of short shows, and so it's it's getting it's getting packed. Then we in Green Bay tonight, and then we go, we're staying in Wisconsin for the. So it's it's been a mess today, but I'm glad that we was able to do this. I am too, Daddy. I love you. Yeah, I love you. So good to see you. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure that you subscribe to this channel. Why? Because it don't cost you a mammy satin thing. Thanks. And we'll see you beautiful mother jumpers later.